Hey everyone, so in today's video I want to go over 5 combat tips for helping new players in The Division 2. So if you're still working through the campaign mode, the story mode, and figuring out the combat system, then I think this video should be able to help you out. The first tip we'll go over is using cover to your advantage. The Division series games are heavily focused on staying in cover and peak shooting enemies. Most of the enemies in the game are going to be able to kill you very quickly. I'd say most enemies could kill you within one second if you're caught out of cover. So you're going to spend a lot of time staying in cover and then peak shooting against an enemy or multiple enemies for a couple seconds. And then once you start drawing in a lot of fire, then you're going to have to pop back into cover pretty quickly. Whenever you are firing from cover, then you can still get killed, you can still take a full amount of damage from enemies. But instead of doing that, what you could do is blind fire. You just hold your trigger or whatever button you use to fire your gun. Whenever you're blind firing, you might be able to take a little bit of damage, but it's pretty rare. But your enemy that you're shooting at really needs to be pretty close to you because your accuracy when blind firing is really bad. So if you're against an object like a car to where you could spin around it, then you could stay in cover and you could just rotate around that car if an enemy is rotating and trying to push you as well. And lastly, there's armor talents in the game that will give you buffs whenever you're in cover. Some of these buffs will give you additional damage, like 15% damage whenever you're in cover, or they'll allow you to regen ammo whenever you're in cover. The next tip on the list is learning which enemies to prioritize. There's a lot of different enemy types in the game, and you need to learn which ones are going to rush you and which ones are more dangerous than the others. Some of the enemies that will rush you are going to be suicide bombers. They're going to have an explosive strapped to their chest, and if you shoot the explosive, then you can take them out pretty quickly. You also have shotgun rushers, and they are going to do a lot of damage as well. They can either one-shot you or maybe hit you two or three times and then take you out. And then lastly, you have enemy drones and RC cars that kind of function the same way as suicide bombers and shotgun rushers because they come at you very quickly and they basically do an insane amount of damage. You definitely need to prioritize those suicide bombers, the shotgun rushers, the enemy drones, the RC cars, anything that's gonna be pushing you very quickly, you need to prioritize and probably take those out first because they are highly dangerous. But not all enemies in the game are going to be pushing you. A lot of the enemies will set up and cover just like you would, and then they're just going to be shooting at you or throwing grenades at you. In some areas, prioritizing your enemies may not really matter that much. Not every area is going to have a suicide bomber. Not every area is going to have an enemy drone that's going to explode on you. But in those areas that do, then that can be the difference between you killing everything or between your team getting wiped. Next, I want to talk about being aware of flanking enemies. The AI in The Division 2 is always trying to get an angle on you, and the AI, it's pretty good. If you sit in a specific spot for a while, or if you are focused on a specific enemy, then every other enemy in that area or that room is going to be flanking to your left and right, and they are going to try to be shooting you in the side or shooting you in the back. So that's something you always have to be aware of in this game. I always have an internal clock in my head, especially if I'm in a room that's pretty open and I know that there are areas to my left and right and behind me, then I'm going to know after I'm shooting an enemy for a couple seconds, I need to automatically check behind me or check to my left and right. And the last part about flanking is a lot of the arenas and rooms and areas in the division games, they always have different routes that you can take. So it's to your benefit because you can flank enemies a lot of times, but then also those same enemies, they can begin to flank on you. So in most areas, there is going to be a area on the left, on the right, in the middle of the room. There's also going to be high ground or maybe multiple areas with high ground as well. So there are always different areas, whether it's high ground to your left or right behind you that you need to be checking for enemies pushing you. Next, I want to go over enemy grenades and enemy skills. Enemies in this game that throw grenades are insanely accurate. 
basically they are always going to hit you right on the spot or they are going to hit very close to you and the grenades that they are throwing are going to do a lot of damage when an enemy is throwing a grenade there'll be a grenade symbol that pops up above their head and they do a big pitcher's wind up like you see a pitcher does in baseball so it'll be about two or three seconds that you have and you can interrupt them while they're in that motion of throwing the grenade but if you don't see the enemy until they're already throwing it and it's too late to stop them from throwing it, then you just automatically need to move because that is a better option 9 out of 10 times than just staying there and eating the grenade. Next I want to go over a couple different skills that enemies will be using against you. So the first would be explosive drones. These are pretty common. Explosive drones are basically a drone version of the suicide bombers. They fly at you relatively slowly, they don't have armor, and they have a low amount of HP. Next we have the exploding RC cars, and these are a lot like the explosive drones except they're RC cars that come at you on the ground. When they're coming at you, you can hear the noise of them driving towards you. They also have a light similar to how the suicide bombers that run at you, it's a yellow light that comes from them and they're pretty easy to destroy as long as you're halfway looking out for them then you'll see them. And lastly we have the saw blade RC cars. These cars are coming at you they're very quick and they have a lot of armor and they have saw blades on the front of them. So your best bet with dealing with these is waiting until it gets close, hopping over an object or on top of an object, wait for that car to get stuck and then shoot in the back of it and then you can kill them pretty quickly. And the last tip I want to go over on this list is falling back when needed. When you have enemies that are constantly running at you or constantly trying to flank you and pushing you out of cover, it can be very easy to get overwhelmed and have your position that was previously safe have that position compromised. Any time that you can fall back into a previous room or fall back and camp a doorway and find a choke point for enemies to have to go through, then you are going to be at an advantage. This is something I do constantly, especially if I'm playing solo or if I'm doing a control point for instance that's very wide open and if I'm getting shot from every angle, from the high ground, from my left, from my right, then if I can find a choke point, a doorway for instance or a hallway, then I'm going to set up shop there, take cover, and then I'm going to wait for enemies to have to push through one or two at a time. And then that way, even if you do have a lot of enemies running towards you through that doorway, at least then you aren't taking damage from your left and right and from above you. There's a lot of mechanics in the game that can play to your advantage whenever you're forcing enemies to go through choke points. If you want to use a foam grenade, then you could throw that whenever a handful of enemies are coming through and then they all get stuck right in that doorway and then you can just mow them down. You could also set up a turret right by that doorway and that would be really effective as well. Or if you're running an LMG or something like the Bullet King where you can just constantly be spraying and doing damage and never have to reload, that would also really work to your favor. And falling back and finding that choke point, that's going to really work to your advantage because you're taking away the ability for the AI to be flanking you and that's one of the toughest things to deal with in the game I think. Those are the five tips that I wanted to go over. I think they can really help you out especially if you're still going through the story mode and figuring out the combat system in the game. Interacting with the video in any way really helps me out a lot, whether it's leaving a comment, a like, or even subbing to the channel. I also have the link to my social accounts in the video description if you are interested as well. Thank you for watching guys, I really appreciate it, and I will see you next time.